Rough weather was blowing up and down the coast, and a blanket of thick fog hung over the harbor. The dispatcher called all the tugs into the great ocean dock. Theodore was the last to return. He had a very strange look on his face. Is something the matter, Theodore? Asked Emily. I think, said Theodore, catching his breath, I think I saw a ghost. A ghost, said Fodok. What did he look like? Asked Hank. Tell us, Theodore. I didn't really see it that well, explained Theodore. It was out near Shipwreck Rock. I saw a small ship. That is, it, it looked like a ship. Only, it was a ghost. Well, how did you know it was a ghost? Said Hank. It made a strange sound, said Theodore. Ding! Ding! Hank was so startled, he bumped right into George. I could see right through it, said Theodore. And it was floating in the air above the water. There are no such things as ghosts, snorted George. You probably just saw a big wave from the storm. When the other tugs heard that, they were very relieved. George is right, said Fodok. It was just a big wave. George is always right, added Hank. George felt good. It felt good being the tug who was always right. But Theodore was still upset. I did see a ghost ship, he said quietly. I know I did. Just then, the dispatcher turned to George and said, George, I have reports the storm has blown trees into the water near Shipwreck Rock. That could be dangerous for ships. Please proceed there immediately, then report back to me. George headed towards Shipwreck Rock on the edge of the big harbor. He was going along slowly, checking for trees in the water. It grew very quiet, except for the sound of the distant foghorn on Willie's Island. What was that? George heard a strange sound, like a small bell. Ding! Ding! He floated a little closer. It was a small ship, but not like any ship he had ever seen before. Its mast was cracked and crooked, and its hull was rotten and rusty. George thought he could see right through it. But the strangest thing of all was that the ship seemed to be floating, floating in the air above the water. And it seemed to be calling to him. Ghost! cried George. Ghost! And he turned and headed for home as fast as his engine would take him. The dispatcher wanted to send the tugs out to work again, but he was waiting to hear from George to see if the harbor was safe and clear of dangerous trees. George hurried towards the dock, looking very worried. You look like you've seen a ghost, grinned Emily. The other tugs all smiled, too. All except for Theodore. Theodore knew he had seen a ghost out there. George, said the dispatcher, is the harbor safe? Are there any trees in the water? Well, George didn't know what to say to the dispatcher. He couldn't say the harbor was safe, not with that ghost out there. But he had said there were no such things as ghosts, and after all, he was the tug who was always right. Well, sir, George began, I'm not sure. I think I'd better have another look at that ghost. I mean, the, the coast. Very well, George, said the dispatcher. This time, I would like Theodore to go with you. Take the salvage barge to collect anything dangerous you find in the water. That is all. But, but, stammered George, Theodore can't come with me. Why not? frowned the dispatcher. Be because, said George, because the harbor is safe. I spoke too soon. I, I mean, I spoke too soon. George, said the dispatcher, quickly losing his patience. First, you said you weren't sure if it was safe, and now you say it is. You will leave immediately with Theodore and not waste any more time. That is all. George set off, feeling miserable. He wished he hadn't been so quick to tell Theodore that he was wrong about the ghost. 
then he wouldn't be going out again right now. Out to where George was sure the ghost was waiting for him. George led the way towards Shipwreck Rock, with Theodore pulling Bobby Barrage in his salvage crane. It was getting late in the day, and the pea soup fog was hanging even lower over the harbor. We're almost at Shipwreck Rock, Theodore thought to himself worriedly. That's where I saw the ghost. George was worried, too. I hope I don't see the ghost, he thought to himself. And then he had an even worse thought. I hope Theodore doesn't see the ghost. I told him there are no such things as ghosts, and I'm the tug who is always right. Theodore, said George out loud, you wait here. I'll check to see if the ghost is clear. I mean coast. There may be some big trees in the water that were hit by frightening. I mean, I mean, I mean lightning. George headed towards Shipwreck Rock. But as soon as he was out of sight of Theodore, George stopped his engine and just floated silently, listening. Foghorn? Seagull? Waves in the rocks. George was naming all the sounds he heard, all the good old familiar, not a ghost sounds. Meanwhile, Theodore floated along by himself, naming all the things he saw, all the good old, familiar, not a ghost things. Shadows, dock, a scary rock. Another foghorn, said George. Boat whistle. Ghost. Ghost, shouted George. That strange sound belonged to the ghost. George raced to where he had left Theodore. Theodore was nowhere to be found. Then, George had a terrible thought. Maybe Theodore saw the ghost. Or maybe... the ghost saw Theodore. And suddenly, something bumped right into him. Oh! cried George. Then he saw it was Theodore. Where were you? asked George. I was worried about the ghost admitted Theodore. I did see one, even if you don't believe me. Well, I've inspected everything, frowned George. And the ghost is clear. I mean, the coast. What was that? said Theodore. There was that strange sound again. Ding. Ding. And it was much closer now. The tugs realized with a shudder they were almost at Shipwreck Rock. Theodore, said George, looking very unhappy. I have something to tell you. And then, again, there was a strange sound. It was very close now, and it seemed to be calling them. Uh, what, what were you going to tell me? Whispered Theodore. T tell you? Said George. You, you had, had something to tell me? Repeated Theodore. Ghost! cried George. Ghost! cried Theodore. Come on, Theodore! Just then they heard. Theodore! Theodore! The ghost was calling Theodore. It knows your name, said George. I know that voice, said Theodore. And gathering his courage, he called. Digby? Is that you? Yes, it is, called Digby the cable ship. The ghost's name is Digby, said George. That's not a very scary name. Theodore remembered Digby. He was an old cable ship who lived near Shipwreck Rock. Just then, the fog lifted a bit, and the tugboats could see that Digby was sitting right up on top of Shipwreck Rock. So it isn't a ghost, said Theodore. You were right all along, George. Now, George was about to say that Theodore had been right about the ghost. But now, there was no ghost. That meant George could still be the tug who was always right. So George didn't say anything. Theodore turned to Digby. Well, how did you get up there? A big wave washed me up here during the storm, explained Digby. Now, I'm stuck. 
We thought, uh, <clears throat> I mean, Theodore thought, said George, that you were a ghost. Yes, agreed Theodore sadly. With the fog all around, it looked like you were floating in the air above the water. Well, I wish I could float in the air, groaned Digby. How will I ever get down from this rock? Well, Theodore had an idea. It was getting late, and the other tugs were wondering where George and Theodore were. There they are, shouted Fodok. Theodore was pulling Bobby Barge, and right beside him, George was pulling Digby. Digby, the cable ship, was stuck on Shipwreck Rock, explained George. And we got him down with the crane. Good work, said the dispatcher. We were getting worried about you. In fact, we had almost given up the ghost. Theodore had a very sad look on his face. George was right, he said. There really was no ghost. It was just Digby. George could see how upset his friend Theodore was. And suddenly, he knew he had something to say. He took a deep breath. I thought there was a ghost, too, said George. When I was out near Shipwreck Rock, he began, the sky was filled with big, dark clouds. When suddenly, I heard a strange sound. So, so, sound? chattered Hank. What kind of sound? Ding, ding, shouted George. Hank was so startled, he bumped right into Emily. The other tugs had to laugh. George told everyone the rest of his ghost story, which really wasn't a ghost story. And do you know something? George found out it didn't feel so bad being the tug who was sometimes wrong. Not so bad at all.